Hey guys, so I'm really excited for today's recent rates video because there's a lot of really exciting books I want to talk about in this video and I'm just really excited about them. So I'm going to do these in terms of my favorite to my least favorite. I did that in my last recent rates video and I want to do that again because I just want to talk about the book that was my favorite and that was Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. So I read this book in a day. It was so easy to just fly through. I'd heard a lot about this because this was the July book of the month last year. So this book has been out for a year and a half now and I feel like so many people have read it and loved it and I can definitely see why. It's, I wouldn't even exactly call it a romance. It's more just like fiction that has a romance element. It's about this young woman who is a firefighter and for several reasons she moves to live in with her mother. She hasn't lived with her mother since she was young and her mother left for another man. So she has a lot of resentment toward her mother. She's a female firefighter and in the profession, her profession at her previous job it was very well accepted. They are very like progressive thinking about women and feminism and all of that. But in this town that she moves to where her mother lives, they are definitely the opposite of what she's used to. So she has to overcome a lot of barriers just being a female. She's very passionate about her job. She's very, very good at her job. And you see that throughout the story. I really admired her resilience and her character, especially like in all of this opposition that she had to deal with. And I thought the romance was so stinking cute. Like when it was first introduced, I wasn't really sold on it because it seemed very like almost gonna be an insta-lovey kind of situation. So it took me some time to warm up to the romance part of the story, but it was it was so good. Like once it it actually turned into something and I really couldn't put it down once I got to the halfway point or it maybe was two thirds of the way through. Like you just have to read the last bit completely. So I'm just gonna tell you that now. If you were planning on picking this one up, you will get to a point where you actually cannot put it down. So anyway definitely gonna read more by Catherine Center and so exciting I have to share it here she commented on my Instagram post when I posted this book so that was just really exciting and I just had to share that because like that doesn't happen to me that authors comment on my Instagram posts and I was just really excited when that happened so anyway that was my favorite of the month four and a half stars really enjoyed this my next favorite book was in holidays by Christina Lauren I also read this book in a day and it was really entertaining. It was better than a Hallmark movie, but I'm gonna describe it to you and it's gonna sound like a Hallmark movie, so just keep in mind it's a little bit different in a better way. So this is about this young woman. Every year she spends Christmas at this cabin with these other family friends, and they've done this every single year since she's been born. It's her favorite time of the year, and they always follow these same traditions during the week of Christmas that they are together. And this year, something happens and she makes a wish to the universe like to show her what she what makes her happy and then begins the groundhog day type of tale that she starts to live so basically she starts to relive this vacation over and over and over again i wanted to read this because it's a christmas book and because christina lauren they are just incredible authors and they write really good books so i wanted to read it for that reason but I wasn't really that into the whole Groundhog Day style story because I feel like it can get kind of boring and old. But I feel like they had just enough of it where it didn't get to the point where I was just so bored and annoyed with that part of the story. Like it really developed past that. So if you don't think that sounds that interesting based on the kind of brief synopsis, just hang in with it because I think you'll find that it turns into something you really can enjoy. So. The romance side of this steps in because her family friends who always comes to the cabin to one of the sons in that family she has been in love with for years and years so this is like a long unrequited thing that she's been feeling for him and she's finally maybe gonna get the boldness and she's living this groundhog day over and over again to like make a move and to you know take a chance on him so really really liked this it had such a good christmas atmosphere because they're in this log cabin in the mountains and it's snowing and it's beautiful and they have all these christmas traditions and i just really liked reading this it was so like it was just so good for christmas so i will probably be reading this again next year like i can already feel like this as a book i would want to reread so i really enjoyed this and would recommend you still have time to read it before christmas so you should do it like i said it only took me a day to read it so you can do it <laughs> would recommend four stars next is a book i have not heard anybody talk about and i just can't believe that i've never heard of this book before so it's the english wife by lauren willig so i did a reading vlog 
back in October, September, I can't remember which, and I went to a used bookstore and I picked this up solely because the cover is just so beautiful. And based on what I read here, it sounded really interesting. It's about this girl named Janie. She's the daughter in this like elite New York society family and her brother ends up with a dagger in his chest. They assume that the wife killed him or he killed her and then he killed himself. Like it's like a murder suicide is what they're assuming happened, but she's not satisfied with an answer. And so she sets out to uncover the truth of what actually happened to her brother. So you're following two stories. One takes place in 1899 when she, Janie is trying to find out what happened to her brother. And then the other storyline takes place in 1894. And it's following her brother. And actually it's more so following Annabelle, the wife of her brother, and how they met, how they got together, and then their whole marriage. So this was really interesting. I honestly wasn't surprising so many of the things that happened in this book. That being said, it was on the slower side. It was a little bit slower paced, but that's really the only problem that I had with this book was that the pacing was a bit slow, but I found the historical elements to be so engaging and definitely a great book for winter because this takes place in February, so there's a lot of descriptions of being like really cold in the snow. This isn't like a happy-go-lucky story though, so keep that in mind. It definitely is like a darker historical drama mystery, I think I would classify it as, but I just can't believe I hadn't heard anything about this, that there was no hype about this that at least I saw. According to this, it was the book of the month in 2017, which is three years ago, and I was on like Bookstagram and Booktube in that time. So I, I guess I just missed this, but I definitely would recommend. I know it's like an older book, and I feel like these days the emphasis is always on what's new and what's coming out, which is, makes sense because we're always just looking for the new thing. But if you want to go back and read an older book, I really enjoyed this and I gave it four stars. I really liked it. All right, so I just had to change up my battery. So I am back. Uh, next, I'm getting into my more disappointing reads of this recent reads video. They still have like a three and a half star rating. Well, three and a half for this one, but. I was really disappointed in Hands Down by Mariana Zapata. So like I said, I gave this book three and a half stars. I have loved every Mariana Zapata book. I think all the books I've read by her, I've given her four and a half or five stars. So I had pretty high expectations going into this just because she always delivers with her slow burn romance. But this one just really didn't do it for me. If you read Wall of Winnipeg and Me, Zach is the roommate in that book and this is his romance. So Zach is a professional football player and Bianca is his childhood best friend, but they had a falling apart when they were very young. She was actually in love with him. Um, that's not entirely what led to the falling apart that they had, but they just stopped talking even though they were so, so close together. Um, and now it's years later and they reconnect and develop a really deep friendship again like they had back when they were children and obviously like her feelings are gonna come back into play because you know she loved him so much and he's just such a wonderful guy and the thing is like i don't really know what it was exactly it was just the feeling that i got when these two characters were together it definitely gave off like 100 percent of friendship vibe and that's what it was going for because they were friends but i never got the jump from friends to lovers that we were supposed to get like i feel like they just made really good friends and a lot of their interactions we're just very childlike with each other. Unfortunately, this is like my least favorite Mariana Zapata book and I really thought I was gonna like it. So that was a bit of a letdown, but it wasn't as bad as my least favorite book of the month. And that is The Ghost and Mrs. Meower. I think that's how I would say it. This is a cozy mystery. I actually was supposed to read this in October because it is a Halloween themed mystery. And I'll give it that the Halloween theme was A plus really well done. It's following this woman who moves back to a small town, of course she does, to run this in, help her grandmother out. And she lived in a big city, DC. You know, cue any start of Hallmark movie. And a murder happens with these ghost hunters and this group of ghost hunters. The town that she is has moved to is full of ghosts like that's its big thing it has like a really high spooky element to it and so it's kind of this hub for ghost hunters and things like that and they're filming a tv show and so anyway this murder happens and we're trying to figure out obviously who did it and the innkeeper she becomes very involved in the story as always like the basic town people become involved in the murder which is like realistically that would never happen but you kind of have to like understand what cozy mysteries like 
the normal people are gonna be like the ones solving the case in this and you just have to agree with that that's how it's gonna happen my biggest problem with this cozy mystery so obviously as you can see by the cover there are pets it is so heavy on the animal aspect like i didn't even tell you but the town that they live in is called wagtail like everything in this whole town caters to animals like every event has a type of animal name to it like they don't call it halloween they call it howl oween and they have like costume contests but it's all for the pets they have like trick-or-treating but it's all for the pets like the cats and the dogs all the restaurants serve food for the humans and for the pets so like the dogs are eating basically human food at the table with every like it's just like the level this book took with the animal love and obsession it was just too much for me like i understand in cozy mysteries there's usually like a thing with pets so i will not be reading anymore by this author um probably not by this author definitely not in this series if you've read anything by krista davis let me know if she has like i think two other cozy mystery series that are ongoing so if you've read anything in those other series and you don't mind them let me know um as long as it's not like animal obsessed like this is because it was just too much i mean it was still a fun read like i read it in just like two days because it was just entertaining and you still want to know what happens and it did have a really good halloween atmosphere because there's a lot of halloween events that they are doing around this time and in this haunted kind of town and that was interesting that's gonna wrap up this recent reads video so if you read any of these of course let me know if you like them what you thought of them thank you for watching and happy reading Hey guys, so I'm really... Are you done? <laughs>